everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Border City Rock Talk, where you get great news, great interviews, great interviewees, and sometimes a comedic touch. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you uh, get wind of when I have these great interviews uploaded. And please, guys uh, and girls, leave comments below so uh, I know who you want me to interview and I know what you think of the uh, previous uh, interview. So without th further ado, I am bringing back Mr. Derek Sagain. How are you doing, Derek? Hey, doing good. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Hello, Northern Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Which mm -hmm. will be uh, very soon. Um, yeah, I interviewed Derek for uh, the, my new subscribers uh, about a year ago, and it was it was a great interview. It I laughed a lot, and a lot of my friends watched it. But unfortunately, my uh, video was terrible. I didn't know how to work a ring light, so you, my face <laughs> I had to block out. And then um, I think the audio was sucking too. So this time we got it all good. Um, Derek, I want to ask you a couple quick things as. Uh, uh, in regards to our previous interview, um, is your daughter still working for Air Canada? No, she got let go. That was very sad in the house for that. Well, uh, what, what kind of com company? Uh, they don't know what they're doing. It's not your daughter because obviously when they train her in Montreal and then base her out of Calgary, there's your first sign. Right. And uh, uh, I don't, like the, every time I fly, like I've had flights delayed or even fucking canceled because... They have no staff to do it. I'm like, how bad of an employee was my kid that, <laughs> that, I'm sure that she an... couldn't help hang on to the job? I'm going to just do this. I'm going to hopefully it'll adjust the light. Uh, a little better. Because so I'm, I'm wearing a black shirt. That's why it fucks up. Yeah. It's all good. And, and I'm sure it wasn't your daughter. It was a numbers game. So anyway, so we'll uh, move well, on. Yeah, I don't know what it was, but no, she's back. She's back home. She's finally. She was it was rough for her for a little while, but she's happier now. But uh, she's very much got the personality of me <laughs> that she's. <laughs> that might have done it. Like I'm just, I'm not meant to work for a living. This bullshit. I gotta. <laughs> she wants to marry a rich guy so she don't have to work. Oh man, you're funny. So, um, and we did talk about um, you. You have a hobby. That um, during the pandemic or the pandemic, you uh, yeah. you got a hobby at home, and it was um, just tell us briefly about that hobby for the viewers that haven't heard about that because um, Are that, we talking that... about gambling or home improvement. Oh, the home improvement one. <laughs> okay, <we did>. home. okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I ended up just starting to you know starting just because we had so much time. I started to take care of some of the things that I'd wanted to do around the house, and then I I really became quite addicted to it. I was. The addiction came from how good it made me feel. I felt like I was accomplishing things, right? Yeah. When you build something and like, say it's hard work and all that. But then when it's finished, like, fuck, look, I did that. I built this. Like, I built this. I built it. Like, this whole, the wall and all that. I wow. put a shelf up on the top. And it's all decorative. See? Yeah, that's gorgeous. Nice. But now the pandemic is over. And if you look over in that corner of the kitchen, I don't know if you can see up over there, there's fucking that big square in the corner yeah do you have a leak we had a plumbing leak yeah and that's, that happened like three months ago <laughs> <laughs> i just fucking taped it up with plastic i'm like i'll get to that next <laughs> pandemic but <laughs> yeah. you're telling me it was a good way for babysitting like when you had all the kids in the house a good way to get your own time to yourself was uh get rid of yeah get rid of the kids because they certainly don't want to help these little fucks they're so <laughs> So, yeah, if I started working on anything, I just put on a tool belt and I know that they'll be out of my way. They, <laughs> they hide from me so they don't want to have to hold a two by four or whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, that was the best. And one more thing I want to bring up about the previous interview is uh, um, tell the viewers uh, one of your worst shows. Uh, when you say, I say Garaga. Oh, fuck, Garaga. Did we talk about that last time I was on here? That was the best part of the interview, Derek. Yeah, man, Garaga still. Uh, as a full-on boycott, I've probably got a substandard garage door just because I refused to <laughs> buy a Garaga garage door. Yeah, they, they I did a gig for them and they didn't. They cut it off. They pulled the plug on me after ten minutes because no one was listening. But that wasn't my fault. You never told them to listen to me. And then they didn't pay me. That's the thing. I've I've had shitty gigs, but you know it's worth it. At the at the end, you're like, well, whatever, corporate gig. What do you expect? Whatever. At least I can cash this check and drown my sorrows in booze. But no, it was. I had now a six-hour drive without any money to get home. It was in uh, Rouyn-Narada, this gig. Yeah, and the well, the thing was, you were telling me that the CEO came in and usually has five minutes to talk, and he says, here's, um, you know, we've got 
Best for Laughs, CBC Debaters, Derek Sagan. And he talked for like three hours and everybody was, you know, had to piss. Hadn't been back like to the bar in two hours. And they did like a, an hour and a half worth of uh, door prizes too. Yeah. And then no break and then just, and Derek Sagan. <laughs> Well, hi, and then you had everybody. those two enthusiastic kids that were up in front. No, you were so great. Yeah, the only two that listened to me. Those, everybody, and the Garaga can suck a dick except for those two people. <laughs> so when you when I say you say Garaga, what's the was the punchline you used? But um, in in a serious note, how how in the hell did that go down that they didn't pay you? Like, I mean, I don't, I I wouldn't think that you're a passive guy. So oh, well, okay, no big deal. They must need the money more than me. Honestly, this was so long ago, man. And, you know, I, I honestly, I don't have for those, if ever the Garaga legal team is listening, I, I'm I'm over it. I don't hold a garage anymore. If I go to a friend's house and they, they have a Garaga garage door, I'm not like kicking it or anything. I'm, I'm over <laughs> it. <clears throat> I was still very new. Yeah. And that gig had been referred to. So my friend, I don't even want the case. There is a lawsuit pending now because of this. <laughs> I won't name him, but he, he did the English version of it so he yeah. did the, the show for them in toronto mm -hmm. and he referred me to do the french show here in quebec and uh it because it went so bad i was embarrassed because my friend say referred me to the show and i'm like oh, i hope this doesn't reflect badly on you and so i left there yeah kind of yeah i'm generally not a passive guy but i felt i don't it's hard to describe man like the when you bomb which thankfully i'm not knocking on wood hasn't happened to me that many times even when i was starting out i think if i would have bombed a couple times starting out i never would have pursued this yeah because i have i have so you have to you develop a ticker skin doing in show business but i think at the beginning if i would have been humiliated and like really felt shame a lot i wouldn't have continued because like that's i see this i think it's probably 12 years ago this this particular show that we're talking about and the hurt, like just you brought it up, and I felt the sting. Oh, sorry, God, I'm like, ah, oh, God, yeah, that was a terrible feeling, fuck, of just not connecting. There's like a hundred people in front of me, but everyone's just talking to each other, and they don't. And say, well, that's the thing. There's the energy, right? Hurt, and if they're not paying soul. attention, it hurt my soul. So I don't. <laughs> well, you're like I said. Thankfully, I'm knocking on wood because you never know what could happen. But I haven't done that badly very much. It happened again recently, to, to be honest. It was another corporate show. I won't mention that company because whatever, for whatever reason, I want to protect them. <laughs> the, the, the checks are uh, still pending. And still it didn't go bad. Like after the show, they're all like, you know, we have expectation of how it should go when you size up a room and you look at it, how it's set up. It's not, it's not so bad. This could work. This could be okay. And uh, it's, again, one of those things, like the show, I was doing the French part and the other guy was doing the English part. And I'm like, so like, we, it's hard to size up what percentage of the room even understand what I'm saying. See, that's why I like to do anytime you're telling me it's a mixed room, French and English, just let me go. Just let me do, I'll speak whatever I feel that they can get. Right. So if a joke fall flat, it'd be nice to switch to the other language because, because let's be honest, especially in a corporate environment, um, most French people will understand English it's not the same the other way. Like if you're right. English, you don't necessarily understand French, certainly not uh, humor. So like uh, the, the nuance that is yeah. humor. So if there's a mixed audience, if half the people are say Anglophone uh, that speak French in a, in a workplace, say they can get by, they won't get the humor. So just let right. me do it in the language that I feel they can do. But because it was contracted that, one guy and he was very famous the one that they hired to do english is a very very famous guy so i had to do the the french part and that's how it went and it was whatever i was i was happy to do it people afterwards were happy with it the the event coordinator was super thankful but you know like as a performer you want to I, I didn't get what i wanted out of it and i didn't uh yeah whatever yeah you, but, you i mean if that's the worst one i got paid really well the client was happy the people in the room were happy say that's not a fail but uh yeah as a yeah, professional you always want to give your best no matter that's what it. if you're paid that's or if it. it's amateur if it's uh freelance you want to put out your best side right so I, and I, I always that's the thing i always give my best so when my best feels to fall short i'm disappointed in myself but they you know in this particular instance they didn't feel like it was a fail so 
all's well that ends well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, thank. I guess I've also been spoiled too in the last since the pandemic has eased up and I've been back out. I've been doing a lot of my own theater shows, say where it's, people are coming to see me. And I always, I never thought I would even get to this point, but I used to revel in that. I used to like, like you go to a Jerry Seinfeld show, like you get a standing ovation before he even say one joke. See, <laughs> yeah. not that I'm getting that necessarily, but I, just when they introduce my name, I'm getting the applause because they've come to see me. They've seen me before and they've seen something they like. So they already like, it's such a, like, so I get, I guess I get spoiled, right? I'm spoiled doing all these theaters and like uh, even clubs and, and bars where people are coming to see me because they know what I do. And they, so they like me. I really have to fuck up hard to, for them to not like me by the end. Yeah. So when you do these corporate shows, they don't know who I am at all. They have no clue. See? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little see, bit, yeah. it's a little bit harder. So it's good for, it's good to put me in check and to make me give that extra effort. Right? right. Because we, we can, I guess we can get lazy if we're just resting on our laurel and, touring around with the same hour all the time crushing because they like it what uh, um so yeah I, I like to do a little bit of everything a lot of guys when they start hitting the theaters they never they stop doing the clubs i like to mix it up and do theaters and then go back and do a club for a weekend and i like i like it all yeah for sure because in the club it's more intimate you meet you can meet with some of the people that come to see you and um get direct feedback Whereas in a theater atmosphere, you're going to be whisked to your dressing room and then you're tired and you're out. So. Yeah, I often go into the lobby and see if anybody wants signatures or pictures or whatever, I do all that. But uh, the clubs is, yeah, and you can play with stuff in a club. See, in a theater, yeah. they want it to be you know, tried and true, like a, a masterful show. When you're in a club, if you get distracted by somebody in the second row who sneezes and you go on about that for 15 minutes, nobody cares. It's as long as it's fun. See, we're all drinking, we're all... <laughs> So I, I like the fact that it doing the different type of venue keeps me sharp is the thing. It keeps me on my toes. That was a great segue because I was going to ask you about hecklers and heckling. Um, and then you're talking about the, the dude in the second row sneezing. What what? Give us an example of a heckler that stood out that maybe crossed the line or didn't, or it was a good back and forth. And what 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 was what is do you consider one of your best responses to a heckler? Anything second? Well, here's the thing. I, uh, where there would be hecklers would be in bars and, and, uh, clubs. And, uh, because I also drink along with everybody else. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I, <laughs> I, <laughs> just this past weekend that we played, uh, I did, uh, Ottawa yuck yucks in Ottawa. And my girlfriend, for some reason, brought it up. She remembered, oh, yeah, shit. Remember, like, last time we were here, you made that girl cry? <laughs> and I was <laughs> like, what? I don't remember that. She's like, yeah, yeah, remember? She wouldn't shut the fuck up. And you started telling her to shut up. And then she ended up leaving crying, asking for her money back. And she was mad because her boyfriend wasn't leaving with her. Her boyfriend was like, you just go. I'll meet you at home. <laughs> She's like, no, he hurt my feelings. And I'm like, well, you're a stupid bitch. Shut the fuck up. Get out. <laughs> <laughs> I forget what I said to her. I had asked her a question and it was like a piaish question. Like I asked her a question that I knew the answer already and I had a, a burn ready for the answer. It's a shame that I drink so much that I can't remember what that was. But <laughs> so when she said whatever it is, I'm like, well, that explained a lot. That's why you, you know, you can't keep your mouth shut, whatever. It's always either full of dicks or words have to come up. Something like that. <laughs> Our Boyfriend's laughing. She's crying. <laughs> she leaves. But well, she just wouldn't shut up. Yeah, like yeah. she was that kind, you know, that drunk girl kind of thing that that rien a faire. You can, she doesn't even realize that the whole room hates her right now. She's just sure. oblivious to the fact that she's ruining it for everybody. And then, so you, I had to take it to that level to shut her up. She just would not shut up. Talking to other people, calling for drinks, like she'd be like, "Waitress, waitress, I want like tabarnak. I'm in the middle of it." See, so I. Uh, Whatever. I don't even, my girlfriend reminded me of it. I do remember vaguely having a girl cry and not feeling bad about it. Normally I'd feel bad making somebody cry, but not her. Um, and I remember another one you told me, and actually I forgot about this until we started talking. Um, beet farming, potato beet farmer was heckling you. The potato farmer. Yeah, not beet, potato. Yeah. Oh, okay. Beet, yeah. He, uh, he didn't heckle. He smashed his bottle and stormed out of the room. So <laughs> tell us that story. That was in St. John's? Uh, in uh, Halifax. It was okay. in Halifax. 
and I had just visited PEI for the first time. So it was not even like it was, it wasn't even part of my act for that long. It was just uh, uh, the excitement of visiting a new place. I guess I wrote this joke about PEI, how I was excited to visit it. And then you get there and you realize, what the fuck? This place has nothing but potatoes. That's really their whole claim to fame. And that's it. There's like a hundred people that live here. So I was like, this is bullshit. See, and it's free to go on to PEI, but it costs $50 to get off of PEI. I mean, this is a fucking racket. That's the bullshit. They trick you into coming with the potato museum. I still gives a shit about potato. And then I even gave it credit i'm like although we don't you know don't get me wrong i like potato they're like pei is like the quebec puts in partner say we do the cheese and they do the fry and the fucking yeah. gravy come from god <laughs> i don't know <laughs> uh anyway this guy did was not having it got up smash his bottle and yell at me from across the room was like potato farming is hard motherfucker and he left the room and i was like whoa i was i thought it was a joke i'm like how can no wait you can't be offended by potato and that was the lesson i learned that i can't because people often ask me an interview like this, like, uh, oh, is there a line you won't cross or is there a subject that you won't touch on? And since that day, the answer is absolutely no. People, w you know, if people are going to get offended, they will get offended. They'll find a way to get offended. So I'm not going to shy away from my own sensibility, which I think I'm a sensitive person. and I'm not out to hurt anybody ever. So if I'm saying a joke on any subject, I'm doing it from a, a place of I want to make you laugh and have fun. Uh, even if the subject could be uneasy, I'm going to try to find a way to make you see that it, we can laugh even at this most horrible thing. Um, anyway, people told me after the fact that his, he was actually in town in Halifax burying his father, who was also a potato farmer. So he was quite sensitive about say, whatever. I didn't, how am I supposed to know that? Say? Yeah. I mean, and the thing about the woke thing and all this stuff, right, Derek, um, Good. I just finished, I'm editing an interview I just did with Shania, and we're talking about her opening up for the Dixie Chicks at one point, and she didn't realize the band's changed to the Chicks now, and you probably know about that. Right. Yeah, I went okay. to I went to the Chicks' last concert here in Montreal. Well, actually, yeah. I heard the I poultry, I heard the poultry industry is getting involved, and they're, they're saying that it's disrespectful to the poultry industry, so I think they might be changing their name to just the... Is that a joke? Is that you know, are you well, kidding? It's, oh, it's my best. I'm sorry. I'm not a comedian. Wow. Yeah. Good yes. luck next time, buddy. That sucks. <laughs> and yeah. Uh, so it but yeah, but they they're see they're musicians and they don't uh, pull punches like they will speak out against things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't really do that. If I do, I try to do it from a way that people can't tell what side of the argument I'm on. See, I don't want to like to start a whole protest that's what i found the shittiest thing about the whole pandemic was every little new detail about the pandemic made people choose sides for some reason it was yeah. like the, the mask how do you feel as strongly about not wearing a mask as you do about fucking abortion or something See, like it's just let's just all kind of work together and after two years maybe but right out of the gate everyone was just mad about everything everyone's always fucking mad i guess for some people getting mad gives them a sense of purpose but things are changing for the better in our society at such a slow rate that none of this anger is doing anything. Let's, if we're going to do something, let's do something. Let's just stop fucking getting mad at each other all the time. It's frustrating. Yeah, there's too much um, division. It used yeah. to be you'd see it in the States a lot with, with uh, Democrats and Republicans. But in Canada, you're seeing it just, it's incredible. I've never seen it my whole life of how much hate there is towards people for their opinions. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty scary, and I'm like, I'm not a big conspiracy theory guy, but the whole like the media and the 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 powers that be, be it the government or politicians or the Illuminati or whoever the fuck it is that's pulling the puppet string. You got it. The whole There's... the whole divide and conquer thing seems to be working because we're not fixing anything. All we're doing is getting mad at our neighbors and our brothers and sisters. I see yeah. it's yeah, it's pretty shitty. I saw your interview the other day. Well, I don't know when you did it. You did it with Frank. You guys were talking about Demar. You're at the Bills game, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who did I I, what? What interview was that? I don't know if it was your your interview by Frank or somebody else. Um, and that was way before the Bills. Oh, uh, on TSN maybe on TSN. No, it was a podcast. Hmm. Maybe it was my podcast. Maybe. But yeah, um, actually, I'm wearing I'm wearing the shirt right now. Oh wow, that's a. The love for Demar, whatever. I was at that next game, 
yeah. after after the heart attack. And have you, uh, have you watched the interview that uh, he has done? Well, he's probably done a few, but he did one, and um, it's a little chilling. Uh, he they asked him what are his thoughts and what did his private doctors suggest that was the cause? Because the guy's freaking healthy as hell, right? Yeah, right. Pro athlete, it seems. And he shied away. He says, um, I, "I don't want to get into that." Which is weird. Yeah, yeah, maybe because he's uh, his agent may have said not to say anything because maybe there'll be some kind of medical, like he won't be able to play anymore if he says the wrong thing. You know. Well, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, because we don't know what happened, but it was uh, it was. And you were at that game, like unreal. I was at the next game. So the, oh, the, the next game. Yeah, the game that where he fell, where he had his heart attack. I was watch. I was in Banff watching it on TV. Oh, I think yeah, that's right. But I had already I had bought tickets to that next game. Uh, for my uh, my two older kid and my girlfriend for Christmas present. Yeah, the last game of the season. It was a home game. Buffalo. It's you know I can drive to Buffalo. <clears throat> so when we were in Banff watching the Bills game, I'm like, fuck! If the Bills win this game, they clinch. They clinch the whole division. So that the game that I have tickets to won't mean anything. Say like they'll they'll probably Josh. All the starters won't even start. So when that game got kind of erased, I'm like, well, at least the game we're going to is going to be important, both for the Bills and the Patriots. We're playing their ass off, too, because if they lost that game, they're out of the playoffs. If they win that game, they're in the playoffs. So I knew both teams were coming in full pin, see? Yeah. So, yeah, it would have been nice if I stayed sober enough to remember anything in the second quarter. But it was so <laughs> – I got caught up in the energy. The Bills, the Bills are, really know how to do a football game. Well, you had money on that game too, didn't you? At one point, I have money on all games. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maybe a little bit more on that one because I was there, but uh, I think it turned out well. I think I, I did all right on that on that on that game. Yeah, very nice. But we had great seats. I mean, like the last touchdown of the game happened like twenty feet in front of us. It was so fucking. It was really. Wow. really yeah, we had a really nice time. Like, it was fun. I had a really good time with my kid. Um, it was a really it was a fun trip. To your family and your girlfriend are big, big, big Bills fans? No, my daughter is a big Bills fan. My girlfriend's a Bears fan. Oh. Uh, yeah, and my son is a Packers fan. But, I mean, it's an NFL game. I mean, we're Canadians going to an NFL game. My yeah. daughter, though, is all like, oh, <laughs> anytime Josh Allen was, the offense was close to the the, the – whatever yard line that we were at she'd be like, hi joshy <laughs> she'd get all <laughs> just being that close to him she was getting all like oh my god hi <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, you really do want to marry a rich guy don't you go for it <laughs> <laughs> all right man well i won't keep you up. well you got some shows we want to talk about you're um in sudbury what this weekend yeah this saturday uh february 25th i think it is i'm in sudbury at the trevi bar Mm -hmm. uh, we got two shows. The first show's already sold out, but the 10 o'clock show, there's still a few tickets left. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's Saturday night. Two shows at the Trevi. Trevi's great. It's a really great, fantastic room for uh, for comedy first. Uh, the food is also really great, too. Um, Marius always spoil us there. He feed us really well, and I come home fatter. Uh, <laughs> and then the next day, I'm stopping by North Bay. I'm going to visit my friend Mark, who lives in North Bay, and I'm doing a private show for this guy. At, uh, he's reserved a brewery for him and his buddies for me to just go and make him giggle very nice and you also uh you also have um right for the sunshine that, thank you yeah for the sunshine foundation uh on april 13 of this year april 13 2023 the big fundraising gala the annual the big event that they have every year uh which they grant wishes to children that are not feeling so good so it's a very noble cause uh that's again in sudbury Sunshine Foundation. I hope that's the right name. Let's see. That sounds that sound right, eh? It Sunshine? sounds right. And if it's not, I'll just um so I'm pretty sure it's Sunshine. 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 I think Sunshine. <laughs> it's like Make a Wish, but for this it has a different name, Northern the Northern Ontario contingency. They do the same things anyway. They grant wishes and help families out that are, you know, going through some shit. Mm -hmm. Um so that's April thirteenth. Um I believe it's at the conference center. I might be, anyway. It's the big gala. It's their their local thing. You'll see signs all over the city. I'm sure for it. But April 13, I'll be there hosting the gala and doing some stand up, and trying to get people to donate money. Yeah, I think I'm going to be running an auction. That'll be fun. Oh, <laughs> nice. Trying to trying to speak really fast in my second language. Hey, hibbity 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 hibbity. Five hundred dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Okay, well, oh, what's the opposite of uh, unsubscribe? I think I tricked you on this one last year, but 
subscribe yeah man everybody yes. there. don't forget to subscribe click the thing or over there maybe where is it i don't know yeah well, i'll put it somewhere so yeah subscribe <laughs> to the channel so you get uh, great funny interviews like this with uh guys like derek's again just a great guy and um, i'll put the links up for um his uh, shows coming and they'll be in the description box and once again man thanks a lot uh, for your time right on thank you ernest Have be well one. everybody cheers <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,